was once a documentary. They asked the Peruvian Indian chief, they said, Chief, what's cocaine? He looked right in the camera and said, Cocaine is our little gift to the white man for what you did to us. A little sip of Perrier here. I had to stop drinking alcohol because I used to wake up nude in my car with my keys in my ass. <laughs> It's basically saying, okay, now we hit it, you know, that, and then, you know, hit a little harder and then back off. Well, for the second time this week, a well-known celebrity appears to have taken their own life. On August 11th, 2014, the world-renowned comedian and four-time Oscar-nominated actor Robin Williams hanged himself. The world was rocked by the news of Williams' passing, which was soon followed by debates and inquiries about why he died so suddenly. Williams' comedic skills continued to entertain people for decades, from a stand-up comedy on stage to a titular character in the movie Popeye, to an Oscar award-winning performance in Good Morning Vietnam. Robin Williams lived a life that seemed straight out of a dream, but how could someone so beloved and someone who brought so many smiles to millions reach such a tragic end? Was it a return to the dark days of substance abuse that led to his demise? Surprisingly, toxicology reports showed no evidence of this. Could it have been the relentless grip of depression, a battle Williams openly acknowledged? Yet, in his final days, he showed no outward signs of despair or turmoil. So, what drove him to such a devastating decision? It wasn't a visible illness like cancer or AIDS. No, it was something far more insidious. A disease that preyed upon his mind, leaving him powerless against its grip. And perhaps the most wrenching part of it all, he didn't even know about it until it was too late. So, the demons of alcoholism and depression he was fighting had already formed a coalition with this disease and became powerful enough to take an innocent life. And a man who had everything ended his life so gruesomely. So, what was the disease that led to this perfect storm of suffering? Well, let's start from the beginning, from the glittery life to the harrowing end of Robin Williams. But before that, let's remind you that Hollywood is no short of tragic stories of your beloved stars. If you want to uncover more fascinating stories and insights about your favorite celebrities, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Robin Williams was born on July 21st, 1951, in the vibrant city of Chicago, Illinois. He was destined for stardom from the start, with a father working for the Ford Motor Company and a mother who once graced the runway as a fashion model. Entertainment ran in his blood. From a young age, Robin's passion for making people laugh was evident to everyone around him. Whether it was cracking jokes for family gatherings or entertaining classmates with his quick wit, Robin's comedic spark was undeniable. As a teenager, Robin's family packed up and headed west to sunny California. California. There he pursued his education at Claremont Men's College and the College of Marin, and then he attended the prestigious Juilliard School. But it wasn't long before Robin found his way back to the golden shores of California, ready to take the comedy world by storm. In the groovy 1970s, he honed his craft as a stand-up comedian, which left audiences in stitches. And it wasn't just the stage where Robin shone. He also lit up the small screen with his iconic role in the hit TV show Mork and Mindy. Then came 1980, the year that would mark Robin's big screen debut as the spinach-loving sailor in Popeye. From there, he soared to new heights, gracing the silver screen with unforgettable performances in classics like Good Morning Vietnam and Dead Poets Society. With each role, Robin continued to dazzle his audiences with his comedic brilliance and undeniable charm. So, looking at it from the outside, everything seemed to be going swimmingly for this king of laughter. It was hard to not envy Robin's glamorous lifestyle and all the fame that came with it. But you know, my friends, success is a funny thing. It introduces you to the whole world, yet somehow it can make you feel a bit estranged and lonely from even yourself behind the laughter and the bright lights, and despite a seemingly comfortable life, Robin had to wrestle with his own demons. During the 70s and 80s, Williams found himself tackled up in a cocaine addiction. It wasn't until tragedy stuck with the overdose death of his friend, John Belushi, whom he had been partying with the night before, that Williams finally kicked the habit. There was once a documentary. They asked the Peruvian Indian chief. They said, Chief, what's cocaine? He looked right in the camera and said, Cocaine is our little gift to the white man for what you did to us. <laughs> Though he never touched cocaine after this incident, Robin found himself grappling with another demon in the early 2000s, alcohol. This led him down a path of heavy drinking, eventually landing him in rehab for a spell. Among the highs and lows of his life, Robin also battled the shadows of depression. This deadly state of mind reached out to his soul and snuffed him out. Williams once said, The tragedy of life is not death, but what dies inside of us while we live. This wasn't merely a catchy phrase he stumbled upon online, it mirrored his own reality. 
Despite his outward success, Williams felt the weight of loneliness, depression, and exhaustion. The only refuge he could find was at the bottom of a bottle. Williams battles with depression, and it was something that was no secret to his fans as he openly discussed his struggles in various interviews. In a candid conversation with the Guardian newspaper, he bravely acknowledged his ongoing battle with depression and anxiety. In 2003, he sought help for his alcohol addiction by checking into a rehabilitation center in Newburgh, Oregon. A little sip of Perrier here. I had to stop drinking alcohol because I used to wake up nude and hood of my car with my keys in my ass. <laughs> Throughout the years, his substance abuse issues, mental health challenges, and physical well-being made headlines sporadically. In March 2009, Williams faced another health scare when he was hospitalized due to heart problems, ultimately undergoing aortic valve replacement surgery. However, his troubles persisted, and a few months before his tragic death in 2014, he sought treatment at the Hazel Den Foundation Addiction Treatment Center in Lindstrom, Minnesota, for alcohol-related issues. Beyond his personal struggles, Williams grappled with the emotional emotional and financial toll of two divorces. The strain of these legal battles not only cost him emotionally and psychologically, but also left a significant dent in his finances. Estimated to be tens of millions of dollars in settlements, he was even forced to part ways with his beloved Napa Valley Ranch, a place of solace for over a decade due to financial difficulties. And as if these challenges weren't enough, Williams also faced professional setbacks. The cancellation of his television series, The Crazy Ones, by CBS hit him hard, especially coming shortly after his heart surgery. This blow, combined with other stressors, exacerbated his already fragile mental state, leaving him emotionally drained and vulnerable. And then, the fateful day of August 11, 2014 came when Robin took his life at his home in Tiburon, Paradise K, California. It's basically saying, okay, now we hit it, you know, that, and then, you know, hit a little harder and then back off. On the evening before his passing at 7.09, Robin called his wife to let her know he was out buying magazines for her at a local bookstore. Returning home, he handed her the magazines before spending some time rummaging through their closet. Around 10.30 p.m., he took his iPad and left the room, which was the last time his wife saw him that night. Assuming he was still asleep the next morning, she left the house. Concern began to mount around 11.45 a.m. when Robin's assistants noticed his lack of response to text messages and phone calls. Upon entering the house, the assistant made a devastating discovery. Robin was found hanging by a nylon belt in a closet door frame. He was wearing a long black t-shirt and belted black jeans, slightly suspended in a seated position, with superficial cut marks on the inside of his left wrist. The telltale signs of rigor mortis were evident. Tragically, Robin Williams was pronounced dead at 12.02 p.m. on Monday. According to the mystery, among the belongings discovered was a pocket knife tainted with a dried red substance confirmed to be his own blood. This, along with the wrist cut marks, suggests previous suicide attempts. The timing of these past attempts, whether they occurred shortly before the tragic event or days prior, remains a puzzle. Despite William's long battle with severe depression, both his assistant and wife attested that he had never verbalized any thoughts or behaviors indicating suicidal intent. Besides, investigators found no reflective devices nor pornography near the body nor any history of autoerotic asphyxia, according to his wife. Also, the pillbox was filled a day before the sign, which means it was not pre-planned suicide. His browser history did not show any suicide or hanging-related searches. However, an unknown source claimed that Robin was part of a movie years ago where he shot a scene about autoerotic asphyxiation, which deeply impacted him emotionally. Further investigation revealed that Williams had indeed watched the film The World's Greatest Dad, where a similar scenario to his own demise was depicted. Then, in November 2014, the final autopsy report came. Surprisingly, it was not alcohol or illegal substances that took his life, and any prescription drugs detected in his system were within therapeutic levels. And before we get to the actual cause of William's death, I have to remind you to hit the subscribe button so you can explore more of these interesting celebrity stories. So, getting back to the report findings, it revealed a troubling detail. I'm screwed, aren't I? Williams had been grappling with heightened paranoia in the days leading up to his death. Further analysis of his brain tissue uncovered the presence of Lewy bodies, indicating a condition known as diffuse Lewy body dementia, which often exhibits symptoms resembling Parkinson's disease. Lewy bodies are irregular accumulations of proteins that cluster within the brain cells, leading to a heavy impact on sleep, movement, cognition, and control of one's body. It certainly took a toll on Williams. His wife Susan disclosed that he was diagnosed with early stages of Parkinson's disease, but he was not ready to share it with the public. Susan was in anguish when she knew her husband was misdiagnosed with Parkinson's disease, suffering from an uncommon disease that's still a mystery to many. Susan also said that he was due to visit a neurocognitive testing facility, but this further added to his 
anguish. He thought, I'm going to get locked up and never come out. While Williams sadly never learned what disease he had, his widow felt a sense of relief as she could at least put a name to her husband's killer. But it doesn't matter if Williams suffered from Parkinson's disease or a major depressive disorder. What truly matters is the heartbreaking reality that a man of immense talent, great wealth, golden globes, and an Oscar, someone who seemingly had it all, was forced to take his own life. So, this is how Robin Williams died. He could have controlled his depression, he could have overcome his drug addiction, but he knew nothing about the disease he was suffering from. If he had been diagnosed with Lewy body dementia earlier, he might not have ended in such an unexpected way. After Williams' passing, a startling pattern was observed. Within just four months of his tragic suicide, the suicide rate in the US surged by 10%. Even more concerning was the increase in suicides by suffocation, mirroring Williams' method. So, what do you think about these imitative suicides? Do you believe these headline-making celebrity suicides are a contributing factor to the high suicide rates in the US? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. For more insider looks into celebrity lives and deaths, subscribe to our channel.